Today's Albion Online video is all about how to succeed as a solo player in Albion Online, the 2024 EU Launch Patch Edition. Now, this is going to show you how to make the most silver, how to be the most efficient solo player in the game, a completely guildless and solo experience not relying on friends, no duo content, no guild stuff, no getting lucky in the black zones. Everything here will be safe and will always increase your wealth and your power levels consistently. And without fail, there is no variance. Everything is guaranteed and tried and tested from the past three to four years of data gathering. Let's get into it. First off, the most important thing as a solo player is your money, your ability to make money, retain money, options for money generation, and so on and so forth. So a few things are gathering, flipping, and crafting. We're going to cover all of these. Investments you can make, PvE sets that you should have, gathering sets you should have, and uh, monthly mounts if you are on EU. That's a pretty simple one. The other servers have been around for a long time, and so monthly mounts aren't a good flip or a good investment anymore. Whereas on EU, those mounts aren't going to be seen for a full year, and everyone will be wanting them. Everyone will want them. So the next one is islands. How do you utilize islands with laborers and farms? Content options that can also make you money not as efficiently, but if you get bored, you know, as long as you're having fun, you're making money. That's what matters. So farming the open world, how to farm solo statics and group dungeons, tracking, mob tracking. While it is a, it's not a safe activity, it is still something you technically can do as a solo player. Ratting, faction PvP, and of course, you know, regular missed PvP. You can try solo open world roaming PvP, but that's not really profitable. And we're talking about money right now. The second most th important thing for you to do is building your power. This includes your gear levels, getting those 8.3s, those 8.4s, getting maximum spec, getting maximum mastery, min-maxing your item power for as cheap as possible when doing full loot activities, using meta builds and efficient builds to get what you want done, fame farming. We're going to talk about the open world. We're going to talk about fame farming statics. We're going to be talking about how you can afford... Um, for farming tomes, just buying tomes and leveling up that way uh, for quick spec ups. We're also going to be talking about how to acquire gear at half the price, either through crafting, market flipping, market, market management. Shopping for deals is a huge one. If you don't know how to shop for deals, I'll teach you. And avoiding paying taxes if you don't have premium by using free premium alts for selling and buying things. And uh, PvP tactics. Knowing how to counter and what counters you, what beats what, proper scouting and engagement techniques, as well as building game sense so that you can act accordingly in all situations. The third and final thing that's important is your fun, the fun you're having in this game. We're going to prioritize and teach you how to do that. So step number one, avoiding the traps like guilds, discord clicks, and twitch clicks. Yes, those are the three main clicks that you should be avoiding, especially if you are a solo player. Then not being taxed or bending the knee to faction clicks and the best times that you should be playing to avoid gank squads and the best practices to avoid being ganked by red zone players. Not falling for the propagandas of why the black and red zones are worse than blue and yellow zones why roads and mists aren't generally worth doing for solo players, and why the black market isn't really for us solo players either. The last category, now you can play the game. Uh, well, I'm going to teach you yellow zone ganking, faction transport ganking, rat opportunities, and faction bombing. Now, before we get started with today's lesson, there is something that you should have already watched. If you are brand, brand new to the game, you have not even played it yet, then I'm going to tell you right now that you should be watching this video. This video here is uh, called Albion Online, the best possible start for new players, beginner guide, EU server launch update 2024. It looks like this. This is the thumbnail. Please give this a watch. It will cover at least your first month of gameplay, but I'm going to be tackling some similar topics that are in this video, just in more in depth and more detailed. Also, before we begin, the best solo city for players to live at is Bridge Watch. This is because it has the highest gathering yield, the best zones, decent, um, it, it's decent for faction farming on all servers. It used to be number one on all servers, but it's kind of fallen right now. It might rise back up one day, but it's also the cheapest to build your islands. 
your guild islands and your personal islands due to stone uh, refining. It's just the best overall solo friendliest city and it's where I recommend and it's where this guide will assume that you live at. So gathering is the most fundamental and basic way a solo player will be able to make money. They will be able to make silver. They will, they will be able to make consistent silver. The best thing to level up first for gathering is and always will be skinning on all servers. It is the hardest to bot. It's the most annoying to do. But it also pays the most because it is in the highest demand. Hide is the most highest in demand resource. And because we live in Bridgewatch... All we have to do to refine it with a bonus is travel seven minutes to Martlock, to our left. And uh, stone is another good option, except not tier four stone. Stone will be amazing on the EU launch because it will be the highest in demand due to guilds needing as much as possible to protect their territories as well as build their infrastructure. Now, once it's established one to two years later, if you're watching this, stone will not be the best, but it will still be decent enough. The worst is fishing. Fishing is the easiest thing to bot, and it is the most botted resource. The, the game company can't stop bots. They do what they can to get rid of them, but sometimes they just kind of uh, go on holiday, and the bots just flood in. And while EU servers in MMORPGs historically have the least amount of bots, there still will be bots. So fishing can is, and is usually the first market to always crash. So avoid leveling fishing, level up skinning. I'm going to assume you're going skinning or stone mining, but because we live in Bridgewatch, fiber is a good thing too. You can refine fiber in Limhurst. That's next door to our right. Stone refining is in Bridgewatch itself. And so stone is just a really good alternative because to our left is a the best stone mining place in the game. To our right is the best wood chopping place in the game, but to refine wood, we would have to go to Fort Sterling, which is two zones away, so it's not really ideal for us Bridgewatch bros. Whereas uh, skinning is the best, stone is second best, so pick one of those. I'm going to do this next bit all in one take. Now, this is all data that I gathered when I played the fresh start on the Asia server, and all these numbers should ex transmute exactly to EU. You might even actually be able to do this a bit faster than what I'm showing you, but... Essentially, leveling skinning or stone, it's all the same. You can expect to make about 16,800 fame per hour with premium or 11,200 without premium. And starting at tier 4, uh, you can expect to make about 178,000 silver per hour. Again, this is on the Fresh Start Asia server. You might actually make more on Europe because there won't be as many players starting. So, you also make about 3,000 faction points per hour when faction flagged. This is gathering in a tier 4 blue zone, by by the way, and which is the most optimal thing to do, okay? So you're going to be gathering in a tier 4 blue zone, and with tier 4 equipment, you need 30,000 fame, which will take under 2 hours without learning points with premium active. You can look for the non-premium stuff on the screen. I'm going to scroll it. Now, if you have 35 learning points, it will take you under 30 minutes to go from tier 4 to tier 5 gathering. It's really not a lot of time. At tier 5... It will take you 8.3 hours with, a, with premium without learning points. But with 117 learning points, it will take you under 2 hours of gathering to reach tier 6. At tier 6, it will take you 31 hours without learning points with premium. And with 234 learning points, it will take you a little over 6 hours with premium to hit tier 7. At tier 7, it will take you 60 hours with premium without learning points, or 351 learning points and 12 hours with premium. Finally, tier 8 will take you uh, 70 hours with premium, no learning points, or 409 learning points and 14 hours with premium. So here are the total numbers for leveling or maxing out your gathering, which you should focus on skinning or stone and max it to tier 8 as soon as you can. All right, so with no learning points, but with premium, under 180 hours. All right, without premium, 288 hours. It's really ridiculously long. Now, it's going to cost you 1,146 learning points in total, which will take 115 days, no premium. But with premium, it's only 39 days. However, if this is the first thing you've maxed on a brand new character, when you do your three days of free premium through the tutorial, you will get three days of premium, giving you 90 learning points. 
and you will get 100 learning points upon completing the tutorial, giving you 190 starting learning points. And then the first time you buy premium, you will receive 500 learning points for your first premium purchase with real money or in-game money, leaving you with only needing 456 learning points, which only takes 16 days after buying a premium and letting your three days run out, or 19 days in total. Your very first month is when you can max out your gathering at tier 8 within a reasonable amount of time. So, by using learning points, you will only spend 35 hours gathering. If that sounds like a lot to you, don't play MMORPGs. Albion Online is an insanely grindy game, more so than uh, <laughs> old school RuneScape, more so than World of Warcraft, any other MMO you've played, this game's got it beat on the grind, okay? So, the silver you will earn with no learning points with premium is 32 million. The silver earned with learning points and with premium will only be 6 million, but you will reach it so much faster. 35 hours instead of 180 something, okay? So at tier 8 gathering, your 178,000 per hour numbers, or 119,000 without premium is how much you can expect to earn on the Fresh Start server. Uh, you actually earn way more on the established server on West. But I, this is for my EU bros that are launching, okay? Uh, once you reach tier 8 gathering, your earnings will jump into over 1 million per hour, and that's without premium. It's, it's similar with premium. It's like 1.2, 1.7 million. It really depends on luck. So if you spend 35 hours gathering to get to tier 8, you will have made 32 million. Then you compare it to the guy that spent 288 hours in the same amount of time. That guy that used premium and learning points will have made an additional... 253 million silver okay so 288 hours with and without premium this is the difference 32 million versus 253 million this is why premium is insanely important to get early on for leveling your gathering so this it's a total earnings of 259 million 0.23 in 288 hours versus the other guy that didn't spend any learning points or get premium he only made 34.27 million all right, this is a difference of 224 million. That's the difference that premium makes in the same amount of time. Now, in 288 hours, you can buy 96 faction chests, uh, which will give you 50k silver on average, sometimes more, sometimes less, but it averages to 50k. And 250,000 fame in tomes. So you will have made an additional 4.8 million silver and uh, 24 million in fame tomes that you can spend on whatever you want. So this is 100 mastery and level 89 specialization just from tomes, just from gathering. Not even doing combat. This is 12 days of grinding. That, is that a lot? No. Here's why. 12 days of grinding is 864 anime episodes at 20 minutes each. So this is about 72 seasons if a season is 12 episodes. This is 144 movies or 96 live streams or... Less than a thousand YouTube videos, okay? <laughs> I have uh, 750 for you to watch. In one year as a NEAT, that means not pursuing education, employment, or training, I have watched 50 seasons of anime in one year's time. I've, I've kept track of this. This is 200 hours of anime that I've consumed in one year. It's not a lot of anime. I'm not a very big anime guy, but hey, you know, 200 hours is not that bad. So let's add up all of my screen watch time. So I watch streams, shows, movies, and YouTube about four to six hours a day. I actually watched more today, but whatever. That's, you know, who cares? On average, it's four to six hours daily, every single day. This is 1,460 to 2,190 hours, which you can spend at the same time playing Albion Online. You can gather while you watch shows. That's right. This is an earnings of 1.46 billion to 2.19 billion per year if you only gathered, okay? Can you only play two hours a day? That's still 730 million you would have earned. One hour a day, just one hour a day of gathering will earn you 365 million silver per year. 8.3 is too expensive, Wah! Are you Are you playing the game, bro? Let's say you work at McDonald's and you make $7 an hour and you work the minimum legal required shifts of 17 hours a week, all right? Uh, as a McDonald's shift manager, you can't schedule your employees below 17 hours due to union crap or whatever. This earns the wagey $6,188 a year. Let's say you spend 1% of that on Albion Online. 1%, okay? Not even. 
So $62, okay, you take $62 a year and you throw it at the game and buy gold. Oops, you got robbed $12 on your way to the bank or something. I don't know, but now you're, you're only spending 50 bucks. So you go to Albion Online, you, you give Robin Henkes, the CEO of the game, a handshake, and you, you give him 50 bucks and he gives you a bag of gold. So that buys you 9,000 gold, okay, from the official cash shop, not those shady websites. You'll get banned if you use those. So if you give Robin Hinkies your 50 bucks, he gives you 9,000 gold. You know, fair trade. So now, if we go back three months ago when silver was actually cheaper on West, and the silver price on EU won't be this price initially. It, it will climb to this in the first couple of months, though, or close to it. So you're going to get about 45 million silver for those $50, okay? So if you work seven real-life hours at McDonald's, in the worst part possible job, a lot of people out there that I know can make more than $7 an hour. Yes, there's some people that I know that can't make $7 an hour, and that sucks. Uh, but essentially, you can work a real-life job at bottom dollar in America land and make 6.42 million silver per hour. Wah, I can't get 8.3 gear, he says. Well, if you can't farm 7 million silver in those 7 hours of playing the game... You know, that'll pay for the weapon, okay? If you do it again, you can buy the helmet, boots, and armor. Okay, so you spend 14 hours grinding for super good gear? Oh my goodness, right? Do you know how long it takes in World of Warcraft to get super good gear? To get all of Tier 1 and Tier 2 in classic vanilla can take you like 6 months. Politics pending, luck drops pending, depending on what build and gear you want. You can spend 6 months... Four, three to four hours, like, you know, every raid night, slaving away. Six months later, you got your gear. Hey, in Albion Online, you play 14 hours, you're good to go, bro. 14 hours, go have fun. You know, slap them on the butt, send them out the door, you know, honk the horn or whatever, wave to the bus driver. They're off to, you know, they're off to Albion school, okay? Or you can just work a Mick job for 3.2 hours of your life. Hi, I'd like a job, please, washing dishes. You go wash dishes for three hours. I quit. See ya. I'm going to go be an Albion YouTuber, baby. At the max crafting. Okay, later on. This is later on. We're going to talk about this. So at, there's different levels of crafting prowess, okay? Ste level one or level zero would be that you just grow crops. If you grow crops and you get your specialization to 100, which only takes a few months, uh, you can generate 500,000 silver per day. It's not a lot of money. But it's also not a lot of time. You simply log in. You spend two to three minutes picking up all the plants and replanting them and watering them. And then you go sell. 500k a day. Once you become a more established crafter with maximum like chef stuff or whatever. You can make 2.5 million a day pretty easily with very minimal math and no transporting. Or you can make 5 million per day with a little bit more math and spreadsheet nerd sorcery. Okay. And, uh, and and that those only take seconds for the, for the crafting. You, you, you log in, you go to the bench, you hit craft, you go to the market, you hit sell. You're done -zo. So, again, that's not a lot of silver. Okay, so 14 million for a full 8.3 set, right? So that's 28 days of growing crops. That is one week of, of crafting or three days of high-yield crafting with spreadsheets. The next subject is flipping, and sorry to say, but it is a members-only perk. What is a members-only perk? Okay, so for $5 a month, right down here below any of my videos, there is a join button. Click the join button right down here. You pay $4.99 a month. You get some cool little custom emojis for YouTube streams. And this will give you access to members-only videos, which uh, you there is a link in the pinned comment usually. And there's also a playlist on my channel. But uh, let's open this bad boy up in a private browsing sesh. That is not the right link. Okay, that, let's see, that is, I don't know, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. This is the playlist. I found it. It's on my channel. I'll go to playlists. Anyway, so here's the zero, like six hours ago, bros. The zero math method to profit with crafting, okay? The best crafts and flips for easy profit. How to turn your silver into more silver. That's flipping. Uh, let's see, we got uh, some other fun things to do. Insane silver opportunity. Now, this one's already passed. This was for October 16, 2023. People that use this method made billions, and this will come around again probably in four to five more years 
when the game devs really revamp the world, okay? This 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 has happened twice in the game's history of it being alive. And the game's been around since 2017, so about every four to five years, it seems. All right, we got other flips. We've got some other fun videos. The best flips that no one is doing, and no, it's not a viral clickbaity title because it's a member's video. It may be eight months old, but it's still very, very juicy. So why am I telling you this instead of just telling it to you for free? Well, here's here's the problem, is that, um, well, I, I don't make a lot of money making these videos, and uh, I don't like taking sponsorships for crappy VPNs or crappy phone games, okay? I get hit by sponsors all the time, hey, we'll pay you money to shill, you know, our crappy game, and I'm like, no, I don't want to shill your great game or your VPN or your stupid man shaving products that really suck compared to just crap I can buy at the store normally. And so I don't I don't want to lie and belittle you guys with stupid products. So in order to keep me fed and pay the bills, I do need people to support me. And because the people that have been supporting me for so long have this this trade secret info, uh, it is paywalled. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I wish it wasn't. I wish I was wealthy in the real world and I could just give everything for free. But I can't. I can't afford it or I'll die in real life. But regardless, the other reason I don't make the, this info public is because if I did, then everyone would do it and then no one can do it. So I don't really have a lot of channel members compared to other YouTubers my size. I only have like a few hundred. And so there's like a lot of them don't even play this game. They just support me to support me, not to get super secret insider knowledge. So by becoming a channel member, you will basically be able to double your silver guaranteed or whatever, like allegedly. OK, uh, so, yeah, check it out. Now, for crafting, I could go on and on about stuff I've already went on about, but instead, go to my YouTube channel, click the search box, and type in the word CHEF. This also is going to help you if you are a channel member. I've got plenty of crafting stuff for channel members where I've actually done the math for you. So, here, 10 days ago, I, I made a video, Potions or Food, and it, I spoil this video immediately and tell you it's being a chef. Uh, here's more chef videos. I even talk about being a chef in my beginner guide. Uh, like you can all, you can type any kind of crafting. You can type crafting in here. You don't have to type chef. You can type crafting, you know, and uh, there will be other games like Skull and Bones and stuff. You can ignore those. The, the thumbnails are very easy to identify with the game's label. So just scroll through, through all the Albion Online ones. You can ignore the Baldur's Gate ones and stuff. But essentially, I have already done most of the research for you. If there is something that you want to craft, just search my channel. Use the little search function right here, and that's that, that's uh, there's nothing more for me to discuss about crafting that I haven't already made a video for. The next subject is investing in sets of gear. So I want to talk. I'm going to show you, actually, show you some gameplay of what that means. What does investing in sets mean? What are you even talking about, Soul Benji? What what does that mean? Okay, so there's a few things. You take your silver, and your silver is technically useless if it's just sitting in your account doing nothing, okay? And I'll tell you why with many different examples. First off, let's, let's, t this is not a, this is not, you know, sets. This is a transport mammoth. So way back in the day, I bought this thing three to four years ago for 60 million silver, okay? And now it's worth 162 million. I could probably get 170, 180 million out of this bad boy. But people are desperate selling because they're quitting for EU, so they're selling it kind of cheap at the moment. But essentially, buy, when you buy best-in-slot things early, what is best-in-slot? Best-in-slot means it will never get better unless the devs do something stupid like release the 8.4 items, okay? That really hurt us said investors. So this is, you should know, an investment is a risk. So these 8.4 items, like this 8.4 crossbow, well, it's worth 24 million, but when I bought it, it was only worth 11 or 12 million way back in the day, right? So I doubled my money, but also I could use this crossbow to make money. I can go out and kill mobs, I can do faction fights. It's going to generate me income as long as I don't die in a red or black zone, right? And uh, the same goes for almost all of this stuff. It doesn't have to be 8.4 gear, it can be 8.3 gear. Uh, this, this satchel, I've used this for years. Like, I got one of these, like, the day of it came out. Uh, the 8.4s, at least. And I have used it ever since. It has paid dividends in my fame farming, okay? And at any time, if I don't want to ever fame farm ever again, or if I don't need a bag of this caliber ever again, I can just sell it for $22 million. I can just go to the market and be like, see ya, and get more money than I initially paid. And if I hang on to this another year or two, this, the price is only going to go up. The price of everything, you've noticed this in the real world, prices don't just go down. They only go up 
forever. In every MMORPG ever, 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 prices only go up. So letting setting your millions of silver... I see these streamers. They're sitting on like 7 billion liquid. They're sitting on 10 billion liquid. There's no item in the game except rare skins that sell for that much. You're wasting your money. Put it all in items and let it sit for a couple years. And now you're, you technically add 20 to 30 billion. This is investing 101. But not only that, just get sets that you enjoy. For instance, one of my favorite sets ever, I pop on this Whispering Bow, which is Awakened, by the way. And then I pop on some other gear. And I can go shoot people down in a faction fight. And I can escape with my life. Let me just finish equipping my gear here. And, uh, like, I, I'm all set, right? I can get uh, some damage there, some healing there, or rather go and viz. Yeah, we'll throw on some invis potions. And and here we go. I have, for the next 30 minutes to one hour, I am entertained. I can go faction. I'm already faction flagged. I can go out and just shoot people and kill them and make a bunch of uh, make a bunch of fame, make a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, faction points, have fun while I'm doing it. And the thing is, this bow doesn't get any better. Yes, okay, I can make it a masterpiece, or I can awaken it further. Yeah, sure. But this is basically as good as it gets. This armor, it's basically as good as it gets. Okay, this this cape sucks. This is a 5.1 cape, but the best possible cape would only lower the cooldown by like 10 seconds. So it's, I don't really care for about 10 seconds. Who cares? And yes, I could use better beefs too. Who cares? It's not that much better. It's like 2.5% more damage. Who cares, bro? This is like good enough for me. And when I'm done with it, I can just sell it. 20 million. I bought this thing for like 6 million back in the day. And now it's 20 million. I've doubled my money. I could buy premium by selling this armor. Just the armor. But back in the day... Oh, I'm, I'm like putting stuff in the wrong place here. Hold on. Okay, get back in your proper chest. Keep it organized. Keep it organized. And what what about other sets? Well, I have gathering sets. I've got skinning. I, I've got all the gathering sets here. All the gathering tools. All the gathering food. The potions. Uh, I've got many, many, many other fun sets. If I want to go out and bomb a faction, I've got a bomb weapon. I've got a PvP weapon. I've got a PvP PvE weapon. I've got a weird weapon that someone gave me because they were quitting the game. And if you want to quit the game, you should be able to give me some stuff too. I've got two of these brimstone staffs, and they're worth, well, 40 million each about. And they were 20 million before the price hike. So double my money. Thank you very much, Apocalypse, for the gift, by the way. And, uh, you know, mounts, 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 mounts. We're talking rare mounts. We're talking specialized mounts. Let's uh, let's talk about that, too, on the EU server. Oh, this only applies to EU server. Your monthly mounts, these bad boys right here, like this Black Panther, which will be in April. We're in April right now. As soon as the server is open, you need to farm this bad boy. Like, go no sleep mode until this bar is filled all the way up on the first or second day. Get your Pla Black Panther because these will not be available again for 12 months. And people are going to want these. Right now on West, there's 700k. Expect 2 to 3 million on East. And premium will cost you about 2 to 3 million for that first week or so. Not even first week, probably first 4 or 5 days. So essentially, you can trade what is equivalent to 23 million right now on West for just grinding out your little reward, okay? And then every month, there is a new mount reward. So if I go to, like, let's pick a random month here. Let's pick February. You get this bird. Now, Saddle Terror Bird's not that great, but on, on Europe, you're going to have to wait until February to get this bird, and it's it's decent. It's not the best at anything, but it's still decent. It's also rare, and people collect mounts. They collect mounts and everything. So by getting it, just earning it, you can wait five to six months, sell it for quadruple its value, and you're mad banking. But of course, after three to four years, it, the mount will have cycled around a whole bunch. People will have many alt accounts that will be earning these mounts rather than one main account. And uh, the mounts won't be worth as much. On West, these mounts lower in value every year. But still, these mounts are good to have. A grizzly bear is amazing. Uh, you know, and then then you have like your Lamborghini, right? The Lamborghini is a trash car. I there, I said it. It's expensive in real life, but if I can rip the panels off the side by, with my bare hands, it's a trash car. That this is the Lamborghini of Albion. Look, it flashes. I turned on the brights. Okay, when you're cruising around town, you feel like a multi-millionaire riding right? this bad boy because not a lot of people see this mount. Not a lot of people have this mount. It's just one of those overpriced heckin' mounts. But it does have, it does feel nice because the move speed never slows down. 
And so, it, you know, it's a Lambo, essentially, but a virtual one. So even though that's not a good investment to make, well, let's see if it is. I bought this at $16 million. It's now 21 I made a little bit of a million. I made about $5 million over the course of two and a half years, I believe, is how long I've had this bad boy. So it's grown in value a tiny bit, okay? But I will say at one point, I remember making a video where this actually dropped in value. It dropped in value. And, uh, you know, you know, it can drop in value. I just want you to, to recognize that. So you got gathering sets, you got PVP sets, PVE sets, you've got trash sets to take into the red and black zone. You've got uh, just random stuff. Uh, <laughs> there's so many sets you can invest in and uh, you will make money in the long run by buying into things rather than holding into liquid silver. Now let's talk about island investing and I am a huge island investing guy. Now back in the day, it was cheap as hell. And it would only take about three months of playing the game every day to make your money back on islands. But now, it's about eight months. You see this? This is a Tier 8 Elder's Guild Hall. This thing cost over 100 million silver just to make and furnish and uh, get all of the really fancy trophies and crap and laborers. And I'll tell you what. This thing took eight months to make my money back and just be at ground zero. But... When I utilize this bad boy, and I rarely do anymore because I'm already super wealthy and it's, I'm lazy, but when I do utilize tier 8 laborers in this bad boy, this thing makes me like 150k times 15. So about uh, about two, two, over 2 to 3 million a day if I want, okay? Over 2 to 3 million a day now, but uh, it was a heavy, heavy investment. But you don't have to invest that heavy. I would recommend just tier 5 houses, tier 5 guild halls, filled with tier 5 furniture, because uh, anything you do in this game, you can utilize a laborer, just about, not everything, but most things, in order to squeeze out more silver. So, let's say I go skinning, and, uh, you know, skinning is gathering, so I'm a skinning gatherer, I go skin, and, um, can, how many books can I uh, hold naked? I don't have anything on me, but I'm gonna try 90, 90, 96. Alright, we're gonna split 96, and can I, oh, these are empty, dang. Well, whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, here, here we go. Non-empty ones. Okay. So I have 89 books here. I can fill 96 of these per hour, but we'll just say 89. And I take it to the laborer, and I turn in one of these journals. He's going to give me 57 hide. Well, 57 hide times 40 is 2,280 silver times 89. We'll say 96 times 96. This is 218,000 silver bonus per hour. Okay. And it's even higher if you do mercenary laborers, though you need a lot more houses and a lot more guild halls to f and more furnishing and to to accommodate la uh, mercenaries. Uh, because I can fill like three to four hundred books in one hour instead of ninety six, right? So it's like four times the housing requirements, but it is more silver per hour. It's like four four to five hundred more per hour. And so laborers simply are a bonus modifier to your earnings. You gather, now you gather and make more. Do you craft? Now you make more when you craft. Do you uh, uh, PVE? Now you make raw silver. Why not? That's what laborers are for. And like I said before, just go to my channel and search island, search laborer, search journal, and you can learn all about this stuff. And now I'm going to talk about content options for, well, making money. So your optimal and consistent way to just purely make silver is gathering, right? Right? There's no risk involved. It's just you're trading time for silver. Now, if you want to mix fame farming and silver earning, you would go into the open world, kill open world mobs. Sometimes you get good drops. Sometimes you get nothing. Generally, it's not a good idea for making money, but you do make money as long as you're doing it and you're faming up your weapons, which we're going to talk about next year, okay? In a bit. Now, if you want to optimize your fame farm... But it's a drain to your silver that is soloing statics with the proper build, with the satchel and auto respect that takes your money away to give you bonus experience. Uh, so it is a huge silver drain, but it is a huge time saver. So at the end of the day, you're better off doing it than you're not. Don't listen to Reddit. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't get enough calories in the day for their brains to work anyway. anyway. So random jackpots for loot, soloing group dungeons. You pop open that legendary chest that's meant for a group of players. It's got four million in it. Your brain just had a little a little squirt, okay? Your brain went, quee, and your brain's super happy, and you're like, look, mom, I made four million silver in this video game, and then your mom looks at you with utter disgust and says, well, that's not real money. 
get a job. And then she uh, slams your door, and then your Mountain Dew cans fall over. You had a little stack of, and your piss jug spills. And you call her back in to mop it up. Anyway, <laughs> I don't live with my parents, by the way. Okay, so tracking is a PvP-based activity, which you can do solo, and it sucks. It's miserable. It's stressful. It does not earn very much silver, or does it? I personally don't have enough data to say that it sucks, though it personally sucks. I don't like doing it. I won't do it. If someone could just make a video where they do like 100 tracking and, and, and you know, spreadsheet how much time it takes and how much silver they earned as a solo guildless player, I would love to watch that. I would, I would love to have that data, but I, I am too busy to, to make it myself. I hate the, the headache of the black zone. Ratting is when you go into the mist with like a 4.1 or a flat 4 set and you wait for opportunities to arise. I made two videos on this subject on how to farm it. You can search my channel. It is inconsistent, but it is exciting, especially when you, like, I almost got an 8.4 guy killed the other day. He had 42 HP left and he survived. He got just out of range and mounted up. If I had just hit him a little bit better or played better, I would have got a full 8.4 set worth about 200 million, and I, I only risked 25,000 silver to, to attempt it, right? And, uh, you know, that's exciting, okay? That's just pure exciting. That's like almost winning the lottery, but not quite. And then faction PvP is consistent, and it's fun. It's one of my favorite activities in the game, and it's the only reason I really continue to play the game is through faction uh, PvP, but... With the new server opening, that's probably going to die off, and I'll have to find something else to, to plague. I'll have to find a new e -court and Coco to torment on some other game. Like, I go to Helldivers, and instead of e -court, it's just uh, Z, Z uh, Cup. And instead of Coco, it'll be Vanilla. And, and they'll... <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm just rambling. Dude, I got the wackiest comment a bit ago. Someone told me that they were like, Oh, I heard that you and them are going to all make a guild together. I'm like, no way, dude. They hate my guts. That'll never happen. Imagine being in a guild with those, those dweebs, man. Imagine, imagine the suffering. <laughs> They'd be ninjaing all the loot, not, not paying for re-gears. The typical guild stuff. The next subject is getting power because it's not enough to just be rich. You must also be powerful. You must have high item power, strong items, maximum levels. Otherwise, you're just going to get bullied by people that did the grind. And if you don't do the grind, you're too lazy for it. Then you get filtered, you get squished, you get killed, you lose your stuff. You're not having fun. You uninstall the game. Simple as, I'm here to help. Let's discuss fame farming, and which also is part of leveling your, your gear levels, your item power. And yes, I do these all in one take. Okay, so PvE fame per hour as a brand new player on the East Asia server when it launched for me was 927,496. This was farming yellow zone open world mobs, even though there was a bajillion players all over the place doing the same exact thing. This is how much I was able to squeak out per hour, which is still decent. And it's completely safe. You don't die in the... Yes, right now, obviously, as a new player in 4.1 gear with, like, nature staff, you go to the black zone... You can farm more per hour, but you'll also die and lose a whole bunch of silver and get frustrated and then you'll have a mini stroke and your face gets paralyzed and it makes your YouTube videos sound all weird. But so what happens here is we're talking yellow zone. We're talking open world mob farming. You make 120,000 silver per uh, hour and this is with premium, by the way. I also showed the no premium on the screen, but I'm not going to vocalize it. So you also earn 9,000 faction points per hour doing this. This is important for later. So it takes 14.7 million to get 100 mastery. This lets you equip tier 8 equipment and have all the skills unlocked for that weapon. And then 33.9, we'll say 34 million fame for 100 specialization, which you need to do on each of the weapons nodes. So if you have curse staff, you need damnation, you need great curse staff, shadow collar, etc. All at 100 specialization. Let's do the math and the time. 16 hours to get to 100 mastery. The Black Zone players, you know how fast they do it? An average of 12 hours. You know how fast the fastest person who is an actual game master that works for the company did it in? Well, on the 35% Crafting Fame Week, he did it in uh, under 6 hours, okay? You're not expected to do this. He played during off hours, during uh, guild downtime, during reset week or whatever it is. So you're not going to get that lucky, you know, with that very specific specifications. And he was burning through poison potions like a madman. Uh, and also, he was insanely gear risk adverse. He was like having a full inventory of gear and not going and banking because it would hurt his uh, exp his fame per hour. Anyway, 
Anyway, 24 hours of grinding to get to 100 mastery, and that's without premium. Regardless of premium, you will have picked up 1.9 million silver, and you will have made 144,000 faction points, which is fixed 16 faction, faction chests. There's no such number as 16, okay? That's a slip of the tongue. This will earn you 800,000 silver and 4 million in fame tomes. Now, keep in mind, you can level mastery and specialization at the same time. So, just leveling specialization will take you 37 hours to get to 100 or 55 without premium. This is why premium is important, especially early on, especially on EU. Now, 4.4 million in silver and drops, 330,000 faction points. That's 1.85 million silver and 9.25 million fame in tomes. Very good stuff. So, the first weapon you get to 100 specialization will only take an additional 21 hours, not 37 hours, because, like I said, you can level mastery and specialization at the same time. Uh, so, this means 2.5 million in silver drops, 1 million in faction chest loot, and 5.25 million fame from tomes. Your first weapon to get you to 100 and spec and mastery will net you 6.2 million silver and 9.25 million in fame tomes that you can spend on anything you want, including those really slow clear, you know, items that's like double bladed or something. Whatever you want, it's it's your choice. And it will take 37 hours with premium to do or 55 without. This turns into 1.67 167,000 silver per hour or 1.17 million fame per hour if you factor in the tomes and the chest faction loot. You're going to get better loot from the faction chests than you will the black zone chests, and you will get them much more consistently and safely with zero risk and zero loss. And the faction chest rewards will vastly outweigh the black zone rewards because you don't earn that much favor as a solo guildless player in the black zone. You can double these numbers that I've just shown you and with a fast mount and an 8.3 set. That's why you get that 8.3 set ASAP and you are fame farming like a madman. Now, you can four times that number with a satchel and auto respec if you can afford it, okay? And then you can 20 times these numbers. That means 20 million fame per hour, okay? With an 8.3 set, uh, farming a tier 4 blue static zone. And using a satchel and auto respec. I am not joking. I have made so many videos on my channel. Just search group dungeon, search static, search 20 million fame. You will find these videos. I've made so many of them, proven time and time again consistently that this is doable and it is affordable once you have your economy set up, which I've already discussed. You should, if you skip the, to this part of the video, go watch the economy stuff. All right. Now, this will drain insane amounts of silver, so your econ must be strong, okay? Now, do you want to skip to 100 mastery instantly? For 20 US dollars, you can get 3,500 gold, which will buy you enough silver to buy Tomes of Insight. You'll need 22.125 million silver to buy 1,475 Tomes to push to 100 mastery. This is three hours at your McDonald's job, okay? But with the max spec 8.3 gear, the static method, you can do level 100 mastery in under 45 minutes, and it will only cost you 7 million silver in satchel and auto respect costs. Only 7 million, that's not a lot of money once you're established, okay? And yes, I just killed the bunny behind the text. It's actually faster than being a real-life wagey to grind the video game at this point. This is why I tell everyone to follow these steps. But, 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 but 7 million is expensive. No, no, it isn't. 7 million silver is 14 days of growing crops or 7 hours of gathering or 3 days of high-end crafting or 1 to 2 days of high-end crafting with nerd spreadsheets. The McJob is only better if you choose to gather, but you're, you're going to be playing the game anyway. And you're going to be probably watching anime and movies. I don't know anyone that doesn't watch anime and movies and, and YouTube videos. You're watching a YouTube video right now. So you can't say that you don't watch YouTube videos. Nuh, gotcha. And uh, so I forgot the D in wood. But would you rather seven hours of gathering while watching anime? Or would you rather spend three hours at your McDonald's job saying, Hi, sir. How are you today? Would you like fries with that? That'll be $14.99, sir. Is it cash or charge? Please don't trash the store because we forgot your pickles, sir. Sir, I'm going to call the cops. Fix up I can't. The cops tell me that it's not responsible. Anyway, you do you, brother. 
All right, so we have gear sets at half price. That's a members only secret. You'll have to become a channel member. I know I'm hitting you again with the with the channel members thing, okay? I need that money to survive, right? Once this game dies in a month, I'm on the streets for real. I'm not joking. Proper flipping. Okay, again, we talked about flipping earlier. That's a members only secret. You can't have it for free. You know what? You can have it for free. Join my Discord server and pass the questionnaire. 99% of people failed the questionnaire. 99% of people. So good luck. You have to be a very base lad that spends his years on 4chan to pass it. That's It's designed that way. I'm sorry if you're a dormie, but it's supposed to filter normies out because I don't feel good around them. And they don't make the best of friends or long-term friends. And that's what matters to me is making friends. Now, shopping for deals is something I can show you. This is pretty simple. I've shown people before on how to do this. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you just, I'll, I'll talk you through an example. I won't show you a full example. But uh, one thing that I normally do is I keep a little list. I keep a little ledger of prices in every royal city. I don't care about Carleone. I don't care about Brazilian. But uh, very expensive items, I will keep a little list of. And here's how I do it. I'm going to hide the text for a sec. And I'm going to go search. I'm going to type Warbo. Let's say I want to buy an 8.4 Warbo. Okay, I go, I go here. Okay, what about dual sword? Okay, bolt caster. Let's see. I misspelled bolt caster. There we go. How about fire staff? Let's look at fire staffs, okay? We have a wild fire staff for 67, uh, 68 million silver, right? This thing is overpriced to hell. Look, estimated market value 23 million, right? No one's buying this, bro. This is RMT or something. This is some new player that card swiped. Well, if I look at my little list right now, let me uh, let me just pull up a list. I have, I've got a list. It's on the list. And no, that's not, I, I opened the wrong list. Okay, hold on. Uh, so on my, I'll show you my list. I will show you my list, okay? Uh, let's see here. Let me get it on the screen, and here is my list. So you can see here that the wildfire staff is 25 million in Fort Sterling, last I checked. The lowest I've ever seen it was 20 million in Limhurst, okay? And, uh, yeah, I keep track of these prices. So, why would I pay 67 million here when I can just fast travel for free to, to where again? To, to Fort Sterling and buy it for, like, what? What is that? 50 million something silver cheaper, 40 million something silver cheaper, and then pay like 10,000 silver to transport it, to fast travel it, 10,000 silver back to Bridge Watch. Hmm. So you should always shop for deals in this regard. Do you want to avoid paying taxes in Albion Online? Government, please don't kill me. I'm talking about a video game here. So to avoid paying taxes is simple. Well, the first way that normal people do it is they have premium active. This character has premium active for 17 days, and then he'll probably never get premium ever again until there's another fame week or something. But essentially, if I buy or sell something, I don't have to pay that much. It's like it's like 3.25% or I, I don't remember. But without premium, you're paying 9%. Ooh, spooky, right? All you have to do to avoid taxes is make a brand new character... And then take them through the tutorial for 15 minutes. And then they will have three days of premium active. You can then give them silver or give them items. And then they, on that account, can sell the items for you at the discount. It's that simple. I've made videos about this. I've taught this in many of my videos. And uh, yeah, I'm just checking this, uh, this little carpet here. It's like, a, I don't know. I'm just checking this uh, founder certificate here. Yep, real, real shame that the devs treat me like this, and I'm a founder of the game. But whatever, the devs will do what they want, and I'll teach the, the population how to avoid paying taxes. So, mwah. Do you want to learn PvP tactics? Well, I've made plenty of videos on the subject. Just, again, go to my channel, and then search PvP, and take your pick. Of course, make sure to pick an Albion Online video and not a Skull and Bones video. That game died so fast, man. That game died. And Elden Ring, fuck Elden Ring, man. That game sucks. But, um, yeah, um, there's so many, and V Rising sucks, too, because the devs hate me, but whatever. Whatever, just pick an Albion video. I've got so many PvP stuff here. You can just scroll forever. You're never going to watch all of them anyway. But if you want to learn PvP, there you go. I don't care if they were uploaded 11 months ago. They're still good. I update the guides if they get outdated. Time to avoid traps to min-max your fun. And starting with that is avoiding guilds. Do not join a guild. Do not join a CTA guild. Do not join a guild that unless 
you are part of the inner circle and you know the guild leader in real life and he is not susceptible to e-girls or, you know, virtual greed, there is, like, almost no guild that exists that does this on Albion Online. They all fall into the typical pit traps. I have made so many videos about guilds on this game and other games. Let's go over some of them. Search guild on my channel and you'll find I quit my top guild. Here's why CTAs are awful. Why I don't join guilds in video games three years ago. I still agree with this. And look, it's an Albion video. Look at that. It, three years ago, it's still just as bad as it is today. Okay, we have should you join a guild? Guilds explained in truthful detail. Please watch. This is mandatory. It's 50 minutes. You need to watch this so you can understand what guild, being in a guild is freaking like, okay? If you're in a bad guild, if you experience, uh, here's red flags to avoid, this is for World of Warcraft, but it still applies to all other games. Um, uh, what guilds actually do in the black zone, and I even have a timer of how much time I wasted with nothing to show for it. I'm never getting that time back, like, w if I were to watch a replay of my life, you'd be like, just skip this part, you know, just like, like a, like, like a boring part of the movie, just skip past it, okay? And, uh, top 20 red flags to avoid when joining a guild? I mean, come on, guilds are bad. This isn't fun. Guild ZVZ PvP with commentary. Everyone wanted me to make this. It was miserable. I even tried making my own guild, looking for a guild. Uh, you know, making a gaming guild. Like, it doesn't work even if I make the guild because no one wants to play with me anyway. It just, guild, screw guilds. Guilds suck. Avoid guilds. Next up is avoiding the Discord and the faction and the Twitch clicks. Even though you are not in a guild... You are still susceptible to these traps by joining oh, the official Bridgewatch Discord oh, or oh, the trading server Discord. Oh. You are falling victim to being in a clique. These cliques do not respect solo players. They hate solo players. They especially hate me. Joining a Discord clique, you see someone spam a Discord in, you know, like, chat or whatever. They are simply there to use you as a cog in the machine the same exact way a guild would. Those trade discords are worthless, absolute garbage servers where no one gets anything done. Everyone just pastes the same crap and never applies to their ads. The owner hates me personally without ever speaking with me. Like, what a, what a, what a jerk. His name is Lewis Twitch TV, and he doesn't stream, he doesn't YouTube. Why do you put Twitch in your freaking name, Lewis, if you don't make content, huh? It's because you're dick riding the other Twitch streamers, huh? Speaking of Twitch dick riding, joining anyone's Twitch stream, anyone's blah 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 stream, uh, is, uh, it's it just filled with clicks. I have spies in all of their freaking servers, and they all talk crap, and their servers are all miserable. You know whose server doesn't have clicks? You know whose server doesn't have any of this crap? I have learned through 20 plus years of guild bullshit, and my server doesn't have clicks. And you want to know why? Because you have to pass the questionnaire to get in. And by passing the questionnaire, you prove that you have the right stuff that it takes in order to be a good person that isn't going to be clicky or, you know, form your own little happy-go-lucky gang and then stomp everyone else out. But um, I just want to share with you guys this fun little picture. This is um, this is what I told an AI to make about the Twitch clicks, okay? You, uh, take a guess of who this guy, who the skeleton is, okay? It's, being a skeleton means you probably died. All right, we got this guy here, this smug-looking dude shaking hands with a skeleton. Uh, this is a, another one who's trying to start YouTube recently. He's making a dumb series. He hates my guts because he disagrees with stream sniping. I literally, years ago, I was dying of a certain, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, a condition, a health condition. I was on my deathbed dying. It was like 2020. It was, the whole world got shut down because of it. I can't tell you its name. And on my freaking deathbed, his, this dude's account got hacked. His account got hacked. And I'm here dying, not going to the hospital. No, I made a YouTube video for a call to action for you guys to help this guy out. And you know what he does when I get banned for stream sniping Nazori? He backs Nazori. So fuck him and fuck his stupid click. And haha, this guy's a skeleton now allegedly and and guess who the gorilla is i mean come on it's obvious who the freaking gorilla is and uh, look everyone's shaking hands and they're passing my look at the guy in the shades who do you think the guy in the shades is huh hmm? who, who's po who's more popularized about wearing shades yeah this this guy here you know he's uh, he's uh, the gorilla is on his back standing on his shoulder standing on this dead guy's shoulder too right and what about this guy with the brown suit who could he be hmm? who could this guy be and what about the, the this guy in the background with the guns you know the these dudes these nerds in the back with the longer hair and stuff and and the, whoever this guy is Come on, these are all Twitch streamers. They're all passing the money around. They're all shaking each other's hands, riding each other's coattails. I love it. The best times to play to avoid gankers depends on what server you play on. Luckily, here is a nice graph from the devs. 
of uh, the biggest activity times. So you want to play during the orange and red colored times. So on west, that would be 7 p.m. UTC. Let's duck into the game real quick. Right now, it is 2 a.m. UTC on west. So that would be right here in the green. It is actually the worst time of the day for me to play because it's light green. And then the next hour is heavy green, meaning most players are online at this very moment. And the reason why is because in Americas, uh, this is prime time. Everyone's off work. Everyone's out of school. Everyone has already eaten dinner. And they're here to play and do their stupid CTA raid guild bullshit. So I have to wait one, two, three, four, five hours. Okay, so five hours for me would be, well, I guess, what, 8, 8 p.m. UTC? 8 a.m. UTC. So when this goes 8 a.m., that is optimal time to play to avoid gankers in the black zone, not the red zone, but just the black zone. The only way to avoid the red zone gankers is to have people actively kill their naked ox scouts, which will cost you uh, reputation. Uh, I'm at 50k, so I can go kill some scouts, boys. And uh, yes, killing the scouts earns you nothing, but it has to be done. Otherwise, their naked oxes will detect you. Their hacks will detect you. They are online 24-7, and they will detect you if you have anything of value to take and kill. And it's not enough that you have valuable loot. Just looking, their, their bots scan your profile. Guess what? When I get scanned... 89 million crafting fame. This guy's juicy. All right? They they know. They know that this guy's juicy. This guy has low player kill count. He is not that dangerous. Kill, kill, kill. Free loot, free loot alert, free loot alert. He's swole bingy. He's a YouTuber. Free loot alert. And uh, you will be free loot as well, and you will alert their bots and their scouts, and they have, like, one guy can have, like, 20 of these things on at once through GeForce Now and cell phones. It's cheating, it's bullshit, the devs won't do anything about it, so the only thing that we can do is just not play in the red zone at all. Now, avoiding the Reddit propaganda. Every day you're gonna go to Reddit and you're gonna see, uh, risk equals reward, uh, I let my wife's girlfriend, you know, get shagged by whatever. Uh, th the whole point is, they're going to tell you, black zone better, black zone better in every regard. That's just... That's how it should be. I agree that's how it should be, but that is not how it is, okay? I can outfame farm people doing roads. I can outfame farm people doing black zone. They can't beat my fame farms. They can't beat my consistent silver farms. Yes, occasionally some doofus with a radar hack that's not showing on a stream will go into a black zone uh, where he told his entire guild not to touch anything all freaking day and to guard the entire zone all day long so that the, the nodes grow and then for 15 minutes he'll gather it all up and he'll be like, look, I made 7 million. Look, look, I made 7 million. And then when I spend two months to, to reciprocate or to reproduce those results... I cannot even come nearly close enough. And then when people make a thread, well, why is Swo Benji's black zone earning so low? Uh, because it's the truth. Those guys get downvoted that say that. But instead, you have to criminalize Swo Benji for the truth. The, the, the thing with this game is, is that everyone is out to get you in this game. Everyone has an agenda. They have a propaganda to, to preach. Uh, back when I first started, there was an entire mafia built around the Great Axe, and they sold Great Axes, and they were hyping the Great Axe as the best weapon for new players since buttered bread and etc, etc. And so everyone was buying Great Axes for everything, tanking and solo fame farming and PvP and arenas. Great Axes were everywhere because the propaganda for Great Axes was so strong. And then I came along and stumbled upon the test realm one day. Well, actually, I got in, my dungeon was invaded by a Bolt Casters guy. And I was like, damn, he's really good at clearing really fast. And uh, I, I learned through the test realm and uh, having max spec in the test realm and having access to 8.3 gear on the test realm. And I tested every single weapon for a month. I wrote down all the numbers. I spreadsheet everything. I ran countless tests. I tested every possible build there is a test. And I came to the conclusion that Great Axe sucks. And these guys are lying to us. And I proved it through my early videos when I first started YouTubing this game. I proved them wrong. And you know what they did? They went after me in real life. They did all sorts of mean, nasty stuff to me. And because I was cutting into their virtual profits, which was actually cutting into their real-life profits. One of them told me that he relies on this game's income to pay his bills and to please shill the Great Axe as the greatest thing ever. He needs it to feed his family. And I told him 
No, I won't. I will not lie to my people. They need me. They need a savior. And here I am today, the most hated and equally the most loved Albion YouTuber. You must not believe in Reddit's propaganda. They will feed you false information. You should always trust but verify, including my videos. When I put out a video, you can make 20 million fame farm per hour and I show the freaking proof on the screen. Go out and try it for yourself. You might be a low IQ, half-brained person with disabilities and you can't fame form 20 million fame per hour like I can, okay? I have an ex-professional gamer background. I've been playing games my entire life and what works for me may not work for you. So trust but verify, okay? And that's the problem with some of these people. They say that my info is wrong. It's simply because they can't recreate it. There was a, a, a YouTuber a long time ago who is allegedly dead now who said that my videos were wrong. He tried to prove it wrong by doing what my video told him to do. But he was so bad at it. He was so, he, like, he was clicking his skills. He wasn't using the QWER buttons. He would move his arrow down and click the Q skill and move it over and then click the animal and then attack it. And it's like, bro, that's why you're not farming as hard as I am because you have your settings wrong. You're not using keybinds. What the hell, bro? But but his fans didn't care. And, uh, you know, Reddit was like, oh, so bitchy hate. I'm so in. Up vote, up vote, up dude, up dude. So do not believe the propaganda. And now for the black zone, red zone, and market discussion. So the black zone is specifically designed for guild activity. Every single zone in the black zone is owned by guilds. Look at these guilds. Uh, each one of these little icons are guilds. Guild, 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 guild. Guild, 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 right? You can click on it and you can see their guild. Let's, well, sometimes if the game will work. Uh, okay, maybe it's, it's, I don't know why it's letting me, it, it let me click on them now, uh, whatever, it's not working. The point is, is that every single one of these little flags is real people, up to 300 people, in an alliance with up to 10,000 people, who are all hand-holding and working together, and feeding their families through RMT, and they're all cheating, and they're all using radar hacks, and they're all using dungeon scanning programs, and, uh, and stuff, and like, some of these are currently being contested and fought over. So, you, when you go into this zone, when you go into this zone, you are stealing from them. You are not part of their clan you are not part of their people they don't know who the hell you are and you can't just expect to go in there and kill mobs and gather peacefully no you are a loot pinata in in that guild i was in for two months every day we would clean 40 to 60 million in loot from roaming people people would enter the zone we would kill them take their stuff earn 40 to 60 million split between 10 to 20 of us yes 10 to 20 people are out to get you that means when you open your little map and you're in the black zone let's pick a random zone when you're right here in the map there are 20 hostile dots 20 dots on your map and the second one of those dots spots your nameplate they are yelling and screaming into a discord server oh 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 here he is here he is get him get him get him get him, get him. And then the, all the little dots on the map will converge onto you and kill you. And all of the dots are geared to the brim in better gear than you, better mounts than you, and gear designed to hold you down, strip you clean, kill you, and, and take everything you own from you. This is not fun. This is not profitable. This is not how solo players are meant to play the game. Stay away from them. Stay away. Stay away. The red zone is just as bad, except they have scout bots, which I've already discussed in, you know, you know, in infinity. But you go to a zone. There's bots here. 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 Here, 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 here. And it's in every single zone. And the second you ride by a bot, it's scan, scan, scanning, scanning, scanning. Loot pinata found. Swell Benji heading east on Rudder Coast step. Uh, my catch, my kill, go to first catch, go, 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 and then they collapse on you, they kill you, even faster than in the black zone. Black zone gankers are not as good at ganking as red zone gankers. Red zone gankers use the safety of the red and yellow zones surrounding them to secure the loot without needing to be in a big, fat, stupid guild that makes them do CTAs all day. So, the only winning move is to avoid, 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 and never, never go to them. So, the black market is another topic, which is, in Carleone, there is a black market. A big, fat, doofus, mafia dude that buys your loot, and what apparently, allegedly, it does is the loot gets sent out into the world, into the loot chests, when you kill enemies, and you, and you get a little axe, 
from the drop. That's because someone sold it to the black market. Wow. Well, here's the problem is that people use third-party programs and they scan the market and they scan the Carleone market and they scan the Bridgewatch market and the Brazilian market and they scan and scan and scan and scan and scan. And you don't have access to these tools, but they do. And they use these tools to automatically know exactly what they need to buy and sell at all times, what to craft and sell at all times to make a huge profit. And because you're not using these third-party programs, you cannot compete. You know the Roads of Avalon? I didn't put it on the screen, but you know the Roads of Avalon? It's the same thing, except people use Discord servers and programs called Portaler or uh, Avalonian Road Scanner. Yep, that's right, a scanner for the freaking roads to tell exactly where to go to be able to transport all the way from this little corner of the black zone that go to the roads doo, 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 and then they pop out over here and they know all, every single route every single day they pay people to, to map these things as soon as that server goes up there is a wagey clocking in to his work in Singapore or China or Indonesia or India and they sit down at their little work phone or work PC and then their job their actual real life job is to map out the road for some rich dickhead guild, some dickhead guild leader that lives in a $400,000 a year house that, you know, has hundreds of thousands of dollars in trust fund money sitting around doing nothing but playing a crappy Unity game, Kickstarter game, mind you. And he pays bottom dollar. He pays like two bucks an hour, which is an amazing amount of money to these guys. But to him, it's, it's chump change. He's already earned it back through his dividend, you know, trust fund, whatever. And so... He's paying them to do all the virtual manual labor that he doesn't want to do. So he has the advantage and you don't. And then he's going to spend the rest of his day getting multiple millions by farming all the aspects that the guy scouted, getting all the, you know, rare loots, the rare loot chests, knowing all of the most empty roads and places to go to farm, all because he paid someone else to do the work for him. And he's going to take that money and he's going to sell it on RMT site. And he's going to, you know, 10, 20, 50 X his investment. And that's his work day. All right. And then that guy, that same rich guild dickhead is going to go pay an editor from a similar country, you know, 500 bucks a month to spin up a YouTube channel and make videos. I don't have an editor. I'm poor as hell. And there's no way I could possibly afford an editor. And why would I want someone else to edit my videos? They wouldn't be my videos anymore. But the point is, is that that is the reality of Albion Online, the Twitch streamers and the YouTubers and the Black Zone and the Red Zone and Black Market. Do you want to learn about faction transport ganking and Yellow Zone ganking? Well, just type ganking into the search. Well, it cleared for some reason, but anyway, just type ganking into the search. You'll find other games here, too, of course, because, well, you know, that's what's fun in other games, especially World of Warcraft. Oh, man, I miss it so much. And, uh, yeah, you know, I've got the best gathering gank PvP builds, how to learn to be good at PvP, how to gank gathers again, okay? Uh, all sorts of different ways on how to gank transport mounts, faction transports, and so on. And you can do the same for the, the other topics like, uh, what is it, faction bombing. That one's not so prevalent anymore because they changed how faction bombing or how invisibility works with the assassin jacket and invis potion. It makes you uninvisible for a few seconds, making it really hard to do. And a lot of faction blobs these days run demon armor, which means you can't solo bomb them. But if you find one that can't, well, I've made plenty of videos. Just search the channel. Anyway, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment. Please leave a like because all the haters, every time I call out the haters, they come and they downvote my vids. Look, I'm going to throw away some rough stones for you guys. Just a little tribute, you know, just like pour it out, you know. And uh, with that said, please click the video on the right side of your screen. I'm going to punch this bunny to death. Click the video on the right side of your screen right now. And if you don't, you're going to open your fridge tomorrow, and two expensive items will be expired. I'm not going to tell you which ones, but it's going to be more than $10 worth of food, and you're going to be like, you're going to be just seething and molding, okay?